Ah, oh, Liege, last of the spring classics. This is just depressingly snowy, so I'm, I'm gonna use last week's Scott ad instead. I guess this weather's not the worst thing in the world, like if your teammate accidentally hawks a loogie on you. Probably not such a big deal. Anyway, pacemaking was shared across a few teams early, until about 90k to go, and while the dialogue I've inserted here is entirely fanciful, it's also kind of what happened. With a strong but not threatening 8-rider group ahead, the pack let Movistar do the work, limiting the race action to Trek Segafredo earning favors by pulling Sky's Chris Froome back to the group. Not sure what happened to send him off the back in the first place, but guessing this game cycling rider was involved, and hey, it's always good to see the guys work things out. As the domestiques began to get warm moving up the Côte de haute Levee at 78k to go, we got heartwarming shots of leaders Alejandro Valverde of Movistar and Etix Quickstep's Julian Alaphilippe helping teammates delayer, which turned out maybe to be not so helpful as a piercing snow squall descended literally a kilometer later, reducing visibility to the point that the bunch was pointing out road obstacles like Sunday group riders. Same thing happened sort of in reverse at 60k to go as Thomas Vokler rode up to direct energy teammate Lilian Calmejean and promptly sabotaged the move by sitting up to remove his jacket, before attacking again because I honestly don't understand the reasoning behind anything Vokler does. The pack was content to let him drift ahead and despite a brief flyer initiated by Lotto Sudal's Tosh van der Sanda up the Col de Mackiza at 48.2k, the group came roaring into and then plodding up the Côte de la Redoute behind the same solid block of Movistar jerseys. This was despite, or maybe even helped by, the interference of the drunkest spectator I think I have ever seen, and the bunch picked off brake remnants including Volkler all the way to the top, cresting a minute down of just three survivors. Even as the gap fell, the pre-catch attacks flew and the pace whipped up, the field stayed together, with EQS eventually taking over the pace-setting mantle at 27k to go, leading into the Côte de Roche au Facon. Their tempo kept an elite group together over the top, and with just 20k and only two climbs remaining, the odds seemed good for another Valverde victory. Which is why I just don't understand Movistar sending Carlos Betancourt up the road 2k later. EQS had already signaled a willingness to set pace, so it's not like Movistar needed a break from working or was struggling to keep the tempo high to limit attacks. And even if they wanted Betancourt up the road, why not do it on a climb, where he'd have far more ability to distance the group? Unsurprisingly, EQS continued to set pace, bringing Betancourt back after about two kilometers. Astana's Andre Grivko then made one of his many counterattacks on the day and eventually got help from Sky's Mihawk Fiatkowski and Betancourt, which makes it really weird that Movistar had three riders in the front stitching things back together at 10k to go. EQS finished what Movistar started just in time for the foot of the Côte de Saint-Nicolas, where Betancourt made another huge attack and then promptly imploded as Orica Greenedge's Michael Albacini led the pack up. As Betancourt fell back, riders spread across the road, waiting for a more logical moment to attack, or perhaps word on teammates dangling at the back of the bunch. The pace eased to the point that Albacini even tried to get his vest off, but Ajay Desaire's Romain Bardet put a stop to that. But it wasn't until Astana's Diego Rosa reached that one guy who has been here every year since 2011 and who should honestly have been in a Santa suit given the weather and the name of the climb, that a move finally went clear, though companion Ilner Zacharine of Katusha almost didn't make it. This duo never had much breathing room. Some iffy handling and a flapping wind vest will do that, along with a Movistar-driven chase that at least made sense this time. Behind them in the lead group, Albacini did finally manage to get his vest attended to, and that was a good thing, because after Alaphilippe led into the Côte de la Rue Nagneau with a scant 3k remaining, the OGE rider went right to the front and proceeded to grind everyone else off his wheel. Lampre Morita's Rui Costa was the only rider who could claw his way back on before the top, while BMC's Sammy Sanchez and Sky's Wout Pools, who had been pack creeping to the front on climbs all day, caught on just afterwards, making for what was a pretty unusual quartet. Albacini continued to lead, showing confidence around the bends through some pretty iffy conditions and netting a gap of 9 seconds coming into the foot of the race's final climb. That's not an unbeatable margin here by any means, but as Pools tossed off his gloves and Sanchez came around to pull, things went downhill for the chase, with Valverde's last teammate running out of gas and Zacharine working an attack and sit-up combo with teammate Joaquin Rodriguez. Albacini put in a little dig just inside the final K, and Costa coaxed Pools, who had yet to face the wind, into closing it. 
Poulos actually went one better, drifting to the back and then making a surge of his own while the bunch behind continued to splinter and spread out. Poole's attack may also have been to keep him toward the front of the lead four, because as they came around the final bend at just over 200 meters to go, he immediately launched, I think catching his companions by surprise and negating some of Albacini's proven quickness. The snappy OGE rider had no trouble initially accelerating to Poole's wheel, but when he tried to come around in the final 50 meters, he had plenty of turnover, just not a big enough gear. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was won. He sings a love song as we go along, walking in a winter wonderland. In the meadow we can build a snowman, then pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man. But you can do the job when you're in town.